we make the move on this Wednesday, former Wolverine Jim Scarcelli. He's here. He's ready to uh, attack this day and attack this show. Scar, how you doing? Life is good, Danny. Life is good. Uh, just just thinking back as a player, they're they're gonna look. Spring ball's tough, man. It, you know they don't hit as much. I think as my era. Spring ball used to be twenty knockdown, drag out physical practices, and it was tough. So they're winding down. I know they're they're getting uh, those. That's a happy day for a college football player. And um, you know, just look, really looking to get some answers, man. Really want to see some answers at the quarterback position. Everybody does. You know, what's going on with Tuttle? Can can Orgy complete a pass and throw the ball accurately? Because if, if those things are good, then, you know, we got three good ones that can play. And then, and then the freshman, I told you, I was really impressed with – I mean, I, I'm getting right into the quarterback because everybody wants to know, but I was really impressed with uh, the, the freshman's th- ability to throw the football and his poise. Mm. I mean, he, looking at this kid, I don't know, he's probably 17 years old. I think we got a good one there. Yeah, look at Scar. What we're talking about, he's giving you a little uh, taste of it. It's practice, some things. Scar went to practice a little while ago, and so he'll have some uh, some different thoughts on some different players. Uh, quarterbacks, he's already mentioned, uh, Jaden Davis and uh, Tuttle, and so we'll talk QBs and uh, Scar. Just so we just order it up. Those are the three things. We'll also look at your feedback as well. How about recruiting? Michigan has three commits right now, and there's a lot of people that say we want more commits. Is that anything to be worried about? You think this is just a matter of time? No big deal. Uh, how do you see it? Well, it's interesting. Um... You know, it's a lot of ways to look at it. You know, Michigan, when when we were winning and winning, um, you know, it was it, the 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 uh, narrative was that Michigan didn't recruit; they selected. They selected. Anyway, somebody was just ripping on my wardrobe. Danny, what do you think about that shirt? Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, life uh, should would. Suck a oh, wood suck without balls. Okay. Anyway, that's my shirt. I'm getting. I'm. I'm. I'm catching it from the the wardrobe. But yeah, Jerry. Jerry's got a bigger pocketbook than me, man. He's gonna dress a little better. He's always been a little more GQ. Anyway, that's that in the wardrobe. Getting that recruiting. Michigan. When you start winning, you got to make sure you get the right guys because you you offer a kid a scholarship. You know, when you're really, really, your program is up and running, many times they'll take it. They'll accept it. So you don't want to be wrong about a kid. So that's, there's one way to look at what's going on with Michigan. Why do we only have three kids committed? Is it because Sharon Moore really wants to be cautious with, you know, how many offers are going out there? I don't know. Okay. Um but uh, you know, you got a new staff. Maybe there's some uh, there's some reluctancy from a lot of recruits. They got to get a feel for all these guys are new. I mean, kids are recruited. Kids are being recruited for two you know two three years in some cases. You know, you've got Bellamy, you got Sharon, you've got Grant. Other than that, those other guys were all somewhere else. I mean, we are Karshnia's there. The recruiting guys are still there. So anyway, you got to develop those relationships. And it, sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. I'm trying to be confident. Okay, yeah, it's, it's it's you know, I looked at it today, man. We're like 43, three kids are committed. But is it a combination of him being real selective? You know, Denny, uh, Denny I listened to the one of the best coaches of anything on this planet, in my opinion, is Dan Hurley. And I listened to him talk about the other day, and he said that he, he does – they do a – put a lot of emphasis on recruiting and evaluating the parents of a kid. I mean, I remember back in my day that I had heard that from Shem Beckler and some of the coaches. I remember hearing George Perlis talk about that. You evaluate the parents big time. That's what you're going to get. So I heard it from Dan Hurley. So I don't know where we are with Sharon. Is he real patient? Our, our recruits, uh, getting the feel of these guys, why they're not jumping on, on board right away. Uh, but uh, let's just stay confident. Oh, I, I guess I, I didn't give any answers other than I'm confident, and that's where I'm at on, uh, on recruiting. 
Well, I, I think two things. One, the last time Michigan won a national championship, the next year they were number one in the country, everyone in recruiting. They had the number one recruiting class. So winning a national championship, you would think, would be a boon in recruiting. Meanwhile, Harbaugh not leaving till almost February, January the 24th, that's going to have its effect. Also, yep. Sharon Moore's staff, where they had to check everybody out thoroughly, vet them, uh, mm -hmm. which everybody agrees that they should have, took longer than you may have wanted just in getting that staff together for recruiting. So that's going to have an, an effect with it. So I, I don't agree with what you said that Michigan it, it's somewhat, you know, it's Michigan. So the, the brand, you say Michigan can pretty much pick and choose who they want to a point. Like they can't just pick and choose a, a, uh, and, and have a, a top 10 class. They got to work their, their tail off for that. But the block M does mean a lot and they should be able to get their, uh, a, a pretty good class with, uh, with a competent staff and, and with Sharon Moore, the part about, you know, back in the day before NIL, I, I think there were teams that could hand off 50, a hundred K and they could pull in five stars, but the price has gone way up now. And to this point, Michigan has done a fabulous job, how they are working with it now. Uh, the, this is just remains to be seen. They may have to have a wobble in a recruiting class. Like they, they come off of three straight big 10 championships and they've got all these scholarships, a national championship, and they can't uh, get a top 25 class. Well, they have to reevaluate what they're doing. It's not just we're, we're looking at the parents and we're looking for Michigan. Uh, there, there's a, whatever the line is, I don't know exactly what it is. I could sit here and look at a, a, a chart of like, uh, or, you know, five stars and everything else and say, why can't Michigan get these guys? And then the other side is like, Michigan just picks and develops who they want. It's somewhere in between there, but they should do better than a, a top 25 class. But I'm not going to, I would like, you know, a, every month, I'd like to have two this month, you know, three next month. And then, you know, Michigan fans, when there's a drought in recruiting, it, it tends for them because they don't have anything else. I mean, it's just Michigan that football that they're following. And, you know, the off season is for recruiting and you get one, then you start looking at their position group and how they fit in and who recruited them. And, and, and then you get another one and it kind of just keeps prime of the pump. It's not really the way it works. It'd be nice for everybody if it, if it did work that, but I'm not panicking on the recruiting front when it comes down to that. But I think there's a reason why they're not sitting here at 5'10 right now. And I think that's because of uh, the transition with the head coach. Yeah. Danny, you hit a lot of good points, man. It's, is it the transition getting to getting a feel for Sharon Moore as a leader? Do, do these, you know, these players got to feel that confidence, getting a feel for a whole, all the de defensive guys are all getting recruited by different guys. You know, I, I was my, I got recruited after Bo won his first Big Ten championship and Rose Bowl. We were the number one. This this is what I was told, that we were the number one class in the country, 1981. But I understand momentum. I understand the impact that has as a guy getting recruited. So you, you hit a lot of things. Where are we at with nil? We don't know. You know, we're, we're, but it, it, you would think after winning a national championship, but again, there's a lot of things you talked about, the transition, the developing relationships. Uh, but Michigan will get it, we'll get it together. I'm just being confident. We're gonna get it together. You know, that's just where I am on it. I'm just I'm confident that we're gonna uh they're gonna start dropping. These kids are gonna start dropping. Yeah, I would if we're I don't guess I have to make up some kind of a hypothetical like a panic level or not panicked at all. Uh I would not be even close to be panicking if I was a Michigan fan about recruiting. I think you hold the line. I think you're going to be okay at that. There might be some other things that you might be a little bit worried about. In fact, I think there are things to be more worried about than recruiting. All right, practice is ongoing, Scar, and you were down there, and you know from the different players, you you liked what you saw. You liked how the 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 energy. I mean, you've seen a lot of practices. So when you're there, you, you kind of can pick up on the energy and you can see what's going on there. And, and you liked how they were getting put through the paces. It looked like a a, uh, a a staff that knew what they were doing. Yeah, it looked just, you know, the, the, the uh, it looked just like Jim Harbaugh run practice in terms of the, uh, 
enthusiasm and the structure of it looked like very similar to what uh, I didn't see any any changes. And, you know, you do your individual, you do some special teams, you do some full team, you go skelly, you do pass rush, you do drills, you do it. You know, you, you try it. They mix it up. We, we did it the same routine all the time. The new trend is to just they, they're all over the place. They'll go offense. And then they go punt team and then they go defense doing this and then they go kick return. And we used to do all that special team stuff at the beginning. And uh, anyway, um, yeah, Danny, you know, we're going to get some, uh, we're going to, you know, I looked at it. I talked about the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I got, got a ton of faith in the, in, in the talent we see. I just, I want to get some answers at, at quarterback. I want to see, uh, I want to see Orgy throw the football. And uh, I want to see I like the freshman. I want to see him run. I want the pink jersey off, and I want to see Jaden Davis. I'd like to see him. Uh, I'd like to see him. Then ask him to run a little bit. I'd like to see that against our defense. And, uh, and then we all want to see what Tuttle and Denigal can do. Uh, but um, yeah, Denny, I, I you know I pretty much covered my, most of my thoughts on on practice. Um, you know, a ton of confidence in the running back position. I I, I don't think we're going to take a, a step back at all collectively as a group. Cor as good as Quorum was, I think Mullings is going to have a year um, like uh, – what was the guy two years ago? I'm drawing a blank. Haskins? Haskins. I, I mean, I, I read it in, in, in some – I read it, but I, for, he's going to be something special this year. He's going to – from what I saw, and I think Ben Hall is going to give us something – and there's gonna, you know, then you got the freshman, you know, the, the, the kid from Cincinnati, and then the kid from Celine. But I, Ben Hall looked good. He, he's a physical, tough, low to the ground kid. Um, I think collectively as a group, our running back uh, position is not going to take a step back. And, and, and I have total faith that our offensive line. You people are going to say it's crazy. You know, you lose Zinner, you lose the. the you know, I, I firmly believe. There's a we could not take a step back at all there. From the players I saw, I saw good looking, talented. They just haven't played. And Danny, I I, I you mentioned um you you were getting into and I think Rich Stringer may have called in, but you talked about you were talking about leadership. I have to mention this because I want to get back to because I, I keep beating them up because I keep going back to him and my roommate Eric K. They didn't start till their fifth year. Great players. Played in the pros. Eric played five years. Stringer played a long time. We got a bunch of linemen that could be those guys. That's what I saw at that practice. But let me just say this. You talked about – I, I got to mention this about leadership. You talked about it. Hearing a guy speak in front of the microphone, that that's the kind of guy you want as a leader. And I just – I just have to rebut some of that stuff because when you're when you're on a football team and you're in a game – I don't care how good a speaker he is publicly. It's it's it, it, when the team's driving and we're up in East Lansing and we got to stop him. I want to know how tough that guy is. Is he committed? Is he all this? Uh, is he going to be there every day in the weight room? Is he going to be in the training room hanging around with grabbing his hamstring or grabbing his whatever? In terms of leadership, I just I thought back about Rich Stringer again as a young guy. He's a guy I I totally respect. He wasn't. A mouthy guy at all. Never said, you know, hardly anything, but just led by example. So I had it on my notes from last week that I looked at guys that led by example. I was not big on the mouth in terms of being a young guy at Michigan. What did I respect? And who are the leaders of a football team? It's very seldom is it the guys that open their mouth. It's the guys that, you know, lead by example. Just had to throw it out there. I uh, I hear what you're saying. I, I buy that that Michigan can reload uh, on their offensive line. No, it's funny when it comes down to being a vocal leader or a leader, you know, by example or whatever else. Uh, one thing uh, they get down or they're putting their hand down uh, for the first game and uh, maybe the second game against Texas, and they get down. And sure, it's going to be uh, somebody's going to they're going to be looking around to somebody. And somebody's going to say, let's just go out there and, and do what we've been practicing. They can say something, but, you know, it's really about going out there and do it. It reminds me of being in the Tiger Clubhouse probably, I don't know, 10 years ago. And I was complaining the week before how Miguel Cabrera 
was a bad leader. Never said anything, never had anything else. And the one guy told me, he, told me, he said, he said, you know where, how Cabrera leads? And he was, Cabrera was, you know, sitting across the, uh, the locker room and he had his bat in his hand. He said, you see what he's holding there? That's his leadership. <laughs> that's where he leads with that's that does his talking action you know, the you know, right so there that's no I, I hear what you're saying when it comes down to that but so all of the stuff when you hear yeah uh, it just so happened that quorum was a great player and led by example he also was able to verbalize it same thing with zinter and keegan and i'd put mccarthy in that category as well you know, they, they showed it, they talked it, they did everything else. Seen was still same way. Chris Jenkins on the other way, like, yeah, down well, we don't know. You and I don't know how those guys are at practice. We don't know how those guys are in the weight room. We, we don't know, you know, when you, when you, when you're with the guy all day long, you know, um, you, you just don't know what, how that relationship is, how much the, are they talking and how much of that respect is due to watching the guy run run his uh do his running in the winter in winter conditioning and he runs you know his butt off and never quits or he lifts like crazy or he's he's motivating his teammates and he's just you know or during practice he's it's hot and it's tough and everybody's dragging and he's you know he's you know there's just a lot of ways to lead and yeah i think we're gonna have guys step up i saw you know guys stepping up with uh you know i watched the barham kid the linebacker he, he, he could tell instant respect. He wasn't saying nothing. Just leading. He was leading the drills and he was doing it right. And he was tackling good. And he was doing the drills the way the coach wanted him to do them. And he was, he was the first one out there with uh, um, Hausman. Those, those guys, you know, they, they, they were leading the linebacker group and they were just leading by example and doing things right. And um, not a lot of words. Just doing things right, playing physical, being smart, being in the right spot. And that kid's going to have a hell of a year. He's a big physical kid, man, that uh, kid from Maryland. Number zero. Yeah, he's a very talented group. We got their linebacker, and I'm going to predict it right now. Somebody's going to leave that group. Someone's going in the portal because there's so much competition there. Scar says uh, the Michigan will, will lose depth at linebacker after spring ball. I Let just think know. that I think we're going to lose some good players all over that defense because well, a- look, you you you're, you're in the age of the transfer portal. Guys can go like poof, they're gone, and then you got to go and you got to grab some uh, as well. So uh, that could happen. I I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to throw a headline your way, and this will take us into talking about the quarterbacks. I saw Ryan Day. Now, I don't think it was a – I didn't vet the uh, the writer or whatever, but the headline said, Day does not discount that Saiyan could compete for the starting quarterback job. Basically, in essence, it was a tighter headline than that. Saiyan could compete for OSU quarterback one. It was something like that. Julian Saiyan is a true freshman quarterback. He's in for spring. And uh, he's competing for the number one job. Michigan has Jane Davis. You already mentioned him. When you hear that, Scar, that, that I'm telling you that. Uh, I believe it, Denny. I believe it. Because I told you when I saw that kid, you I was it. happy when he went to Alabama. Okay? I watched him play in high school. I didn't want to hear about that kid going uh, anywhere in the Big Ten. So when I heard Alabama, I was happy. I was hoping Jim could have got in to see that kid and get him to Ann Arbor. But. I did not want to see him come to Columbus. That's the last place in the world. He's a good player. He is accurate. He's athletic. He's good. And by the time we see him game 12, he ain't going to be no freshman. So I could totally see that. The kid's going to play. And he'll probably be the guy we play next year. He's, he's a good player, man. And, um, you know, the other guy, I was, I, I'm not fearing the other guy because I think he's an average passer. He's a good runner. That, you know, who knows what kind of – they might have both of them uh, worked in. But I totally believe it, Danny. I totally believe it. I did not want to see him go to uh, to Columbus. Yeah, there he is. Uh, there's two five-star freshmen uh, in there, uh, Sagan and, and Aaron Nolan. You're talking about Will Howard, who a lot of people uh, presumed that he was going to be uh, number one. But this is uh, – they've got a, a number – of of Q. You know, Danny, put that back. You know, put that back up there. You know, you know, you know what he might be saying as a coach. 
if you heard that and read that, he might be telling these other guys, I want you to leave. Because I know that this Julian Sane kid is a stud. So what coaches do sometimes like that, maybe he wants Lincoln Kleinholz to hit the road or Devin Brown to pack the pack his bag so he's got two open scholarships. Don't don't fool yourself. He, that I would not make that statement unless I you know every statement a head coach makes is is thought out. You know what does that mean? Why am I saying that? Because you know you're going to have three guys discouraged, four guys discouraged there. <laughs> Well, the, the the Howard kid is going to be the leader, you would think, going into the clubhouse. But all them other guys are thinking, "Wow, he's already got this kid pegged that he he's it, you know he's he's mentioning his name, but he didn't mention mine." He could be saying to those other guys, "Hey, I want you to leave. I want your scholarship." There's a lot of ways they get get rid of guys. I'm just saying. All right, you can always go a long ways uh, with that one. Meanwhile, this is what Michigan's quarterback uh, room looks like right now in the spring. You know, who knows about Tuttle? And so, or who knows about any of them? And then you got the the uh, the true freshman. A lot of people uh, are talking about the transfer portal. You know, here's Ferris talking about J.J. Cole. Is that the kid from uh, U- UCLA? It, it could be. Uh, I guess I'll He's have- a good player, man. He was a good player at Akron. He's not a stiff. He's a proven player. Uh, I believe that's the kid from Akron, right, Ferris? I believe so. Um, I'll check. But I think that's that kid. and He's a good player. So, you know, Denny, it's a combination of uh, we just, we just, you know, we're going to, the spring game is going to tell us so much. You know, what's going on with Tuttle? Let's, if, if we, if we get Alex doing the things we want him to do, uh, then that is a real tough offense to defend if he can do, uh, give us a, uh, you know, 2.0 uh, Lamar Jackson version, then uh, we're going to be tough to beat. Uh, but, Cole is at Iowa State. Sorry. Jeff. Oh, is that the kid at Iowa State? Okay. I, I, I don't know what he – I haven't studied him. I looked at the kid. At, there's a kid from UCLA who was at Akron, and then he came with Chip for one year. He's a pretty good player too. But there's there's going to be guys out there, and – um Look, we, we've won, you know, with what we have going on defense. So here's what I want to see in the spring game, Danny. I just I just want to see good quarterback play. I want to see Tuttle. See what the hell you can do. I want to see the defensive tweaks from uh, uh, from Wink, the OG. I, I don't think we're going to see much at all. I don't think we're going to see many big-time tweaks there. I think it's going to be the foundation will be this, this – this, the same base defense, a 3-4 when we bring tight ends in. When Michigan's offense brings tight ends, we'll have three D linemen, two edge, two linebackers. That's our base. When we want to spread it out, bring more receivers in, then we'll go with our nickel and take out a D lineman. And but we'll be good against the run. So I want to, I'm really, really looking because I'll be able to look at the film and I really want to break down the tweaks and the things I'm seeing. Because there was a subtle difference between McDonald and Minter. And we'll see some subtle differences. We probably won't see it in the spring game, but I think the foundation's going to be the same. Uh, again, I want to see tight ends block. I want to see our offensive line. Look, if we can have some success against that defensive front with our offense, if we can move dudes, if we can move some of the big bodies on our defense, that's saying something. So I'm looking for I'm looking for Klein to block, offensive line that uh, can pull and do things. I want to see how athletic our tackles are. Uh, what we can do. And Denny, I'm really, again, I just want to keep looking at 2025 starters on defense and offense. I want to see if Eno Etta is the guy that can replace more. I want to see that. I want to feel it. I want to know that TJ guy is the guy that can replace Josiah Stewart and we can beat Ohio state with those guys. So that's what I want to see. I want to see the guys that are freshmen that they're going to play in the spring game that are finishing their freshman year, the guys that are sophomores, you know, I didn't come into my, I, it, it all clicked for me, Danny. I've said this before. I was bad as a freshman and I was not very good as a sophomore, but that spring going into my junior year is when it started to click for me as a player. I started to understand my technique and really understood how to take on blocks better. And and, and, the, and that's why I'm always patient with guys. So I'm, I'm hoping that we see uh, some of these guys that really clicks. 
Scar, I am not worried, like I said, about Michigan in recruiting. But if Michigan has to go after a quarterback after spring practice, I am going to be worried. I want to get to that in one minute, but I want to ask you the question about the subtle differences between McDonald and Minter. Because if somebody asked me, if they asked me that question, I would say I didn't see any subtle differences. So give me a subtle difference between Jesse Minter um, taking over for Mike McDonald. Danny, I, I, I really would like to get some film. I think Minter was a bit, I think Minter was a bit more aggressive. Um, but the foundational, right. the foundational structure and belief system of how we're going to play technique up front was was the same in terms of you know one technique, three technique. We're going to play with great technique, and we're going to bring backers. We're going to bring safeties. We're going to bring corners. You know, and Mc, and McDonald did all of that. I think Minter did a little more, bringing corners, bringing safeties. Bringing linebackers, dropping, uh, uh, you know, dropping D linemen, but we that those were all that was all smoke and mirrors in gimmicks. Some of the the, the things that we did, but we had a great foundation where, and, and I, I learned this as a young defensive coach. You just can't keep doing stuff all the time. You got to be able to line up in your base stuff, Danny. You know, you're a baseball. You got to be able to just throw a fastball sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean, you just got to line up and play with your basic defense. And we could do that with both of those guys. We could just line up and play a basic vanilla, uh, you know, defense and stop people. And, and then when you do all the stunning and all the other stuff blended in between subtly, it puts the defense, puts the offense in conflict. You got it. Uh, I do. Uh, oh, yeah, Danny, to, to answer your question, Minter, yeah. in my opinion, brought linebackers more, brought safeties, corners, uh, and he changed uh, from week to week, uh, uh, you know, where you think you're going to run, he's going to come out and miss, and then he comes out in something totally different. You know, he, he, might, he might defend Indiana when they're in a, a certain formation one way, and the following week, we got Purdue in the exact same formation, and we're in to something totally different. You follow me? Yeah. So that the people that scout Michigan, they're like, well, what's he do against that formation with that personnel group? Well, I don't know, because he did three different things against me. He did Indiana one thing. He did this against Purdue. And, he, you know, he did this. That's what's good about both of those guys. I think, I think McDonald was a little more predictable in terms of what you're going to get week in, week out against certain teams. All right. Let me just uh, check on something here. All right. We are, we're, we're going on Twitter for some reason, uh, the YouTube feed, I think everything is uh pop. Let me say this too, Danny, while right. you're looking at that. All right. I've been talking to people about Esposito. I know people that do this guy for five, six, seven years ago. And there's people fired up about this dude. Everybody I talked to, had nothing but th great things to say about Esposito as a person, as a recruiter, as a coach. Uh, so, you know, old, uh, old Scruggs running, uh, doing what he did, it might have been a blessing. I think we may have traded up because everything, everybody I've talked to, you know, he spent, he spent a little time recruiting my nephew at Western Michigan back in the day. So he's, he's a solid dude, man. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those things. Coaches are, are really important. You know, it's your head coach that's going to be ultimately, you know, he's the one. And there's a little bit of this when it comes to assistance, though. You know, Michigan has an assistant, and, you know, he's great, and then he leaves, and then he's not so great, you know, the Michigan fan base. And uh, I, I don't know, like, and, and, but sometimes your top target, the head coach or assistant coach or, or whatever, you know, it's not bad being a, a second or third choice. They end up being better, but I don't know. If, to me, I gotta, I'm gonna have to wait and see on all that. Uh, coach has a good resume. Uh, all of these coaches have good resumes. How they're gonna fit in? Uh, you know, I, I can't say we're gonna gonna see on all of them. He's uh, he's assembled his staff there. I just, um, you know, the part I, I'm not gonna say. Well, the guy was what was he doing at the MAC level, and, and how come? Like I've seen some people say, but I'm also not, and I'm not saying you're doing this like anointing him. Oh, like hey, he's a great coach. 
<laughs> he's great. You know, he's he's doing all this. I don't know. Like, so we, we just look. Uh, I, I just find that it, it's always like that. It's always been like that with Michigan. They bring in an assistant coach. This guy's great. He leaves. Uh, oh, yeah, he wasn't all that great. You know, we won't miss him. Uh, well, man, Kenny, you look, 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 look at Ohio State just brought in Tim Drevno. Yeah, that's right. To coach the offensive line. He was with Chip. Well, he was with Jim for many years. He was with Jim in, in Stanford. He was with Jim in yeah. San Francisco. And here. At Michigan. Jim brought him to Michigan. But Jim, Jim fired him. Okay, so what, he's the great offensive line coach, and now he's at OSU. So who's better off, their offensive line coach or our D-line coach, Lou Esposito, who was the head coach at Davenport. And, you know, he's been bounced around, been in court. So anyway, I talked to a former player, a friend of mine, was at practice. He loved what he was seeing from Esposito. Good. Take charge, coaching technique. Players were gravitating to him. Anyway, Drevno's at OSU. I always thought Drevno was a really, really good teacher of technique, Danny. I, I saw right away Jim's first game at Michigan. I thought our offensive line were coached up well. I don't know how good a recruiter he was. But he's over there, and I think that's another sign of, of, of Ryan Day wanting to play physical football, wanting to run the ball. Another thought, Wink Martindale. Danny, I heard this. You, you and I, you talked to uh, – there's a guy by the name of Bob Camille, former Michigan recruiting coordinator, Michigan legend. He was there when I was playing. Yeah. Wink Martindale was his graduate assistant – at Notre Dame back in the day. So I, I talked to uh, some friends that uh, told me about that. So Wink worked for Bobby C., a Michigan guy, and that was uh, that was good to hear that. Um, I'm just fired up. I know this is off target, but I'm, I'm fired up about what I'm seeing from our basketball coach, Denny, bringing in two real good assistant coaches. I know no one's been signed yet, but I thought he's hired two really good assistant coaches. Yeah, let, let's see if there's – they're like a hundred players that are in the transfer portal and every day there's three or four of them that, you know, have Michigan on their list. So, you know, Michigan needs a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys out there and uh, I'm ready to see who he ends up uh, bringing in. I'm excited about that as well. All right. The scarf. There's a part about that. I Like I said a couple minutes ago that I'd be worried if I was a Michigan fan a little bit, if um, U of M goes to the transfer portal after spring ball, but it really depends. Are they, are they going out there for just some depth? It depends who the quarterback is and what he brings to the table. If there's a, an, an obvious quarterback that's out there that can come in and compete and maybe even be better than anybody that they have, even if they like them, well, then, you know, you can, you can say that that's a, that's a good move. Uh, so it's, it, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but, just overall, and I know you're not going to be concerned, you're a former player, you're a former coach. I mean, you're not going to be over here talking about, I'm worried. But I think the fans, I understand being a little bit worried about the quarterback position if after spring ball they're going into the transfer portal and bringing somebody else in. Yeah, yeah, that would be uh, – I can understand it. You know, you think that um, we got guys that we recruited, we developed them, and uh, did we make a mistake in recruiting? That's that's hard to accept, you know. So. Danny, I totally get it. Um, we're going to get a ton of answers in about uh, 10 days, man, at that same <laughs> game. That's right. And, um, you know, and, um, yeah, just just don't – I don't really have answers there, man. You know, Danny, they had uh, the pay scales of the defensive coaches. Wink was like number two or one of the very top highest paid coaches in the country. And I, I just thought it was good that, you know, Sharon is not making a ton of money. And that we decide, you know, and that Ward and whoever stepped up and said, let's go get the best defensive coordinator out there. So I just thought that that was good, that our head coach isn't making a ton of money. Well, he's unproven. And we have, you know, and, and we, we're spending a money on a really, you know, a great defensive coach. And I, I just thought it was a good thing that, you know, we, we paid the price to get the right guy in here. I'm, I'm with you on that. I think that the uh... – where they sit. I think the other part that, that they've been able to keep these players uh, every other day, I mentioned, you know, the transfer portal in basketball, there's big names that are hitting the transfer portal all across college football as well. And you know, there's, there's money to be had out there. So Michigan has been able to hold the line and, 
and keep the players. You understood, even mm-hmm. though it, uh, it sucked after a week or two after uh, Rod Moore got hurt. Uh, Keon Sab, I don't think, would have left. But yeah, if Rod right. Moore would have got hurt a week before, you, you never plan on any of those things. But I think Keon Sab would have stayed here. So they've just lost, really, uh, Keon Sab. And, you know, so they've done a good job being able to keep their players. If they're you wonder, still- you know, Denny, you wonder, could he pull a, uh, like, the big tackle that went to Iowa? <laughs> now he's back in Alabama. You just wonder. I mean, there, you know, there, you, you don't, you never know. Is, is, is does that change it? Because it, apparently, it's a seven month, seven month recovery. He's got, he must have a serious, you know, knee deal. Sure. But um, he also played as a true freshman, so he could redshirt and actually be back next year. But I don't know. I don't know. He probably, gonna, I thought he yeah. was going to go pro this year or had a chance. So anything's possible now. Uh, trying to think of some other things. Um, I saw Ryan Day make a statement. You know, I wasn't born into a football family. I don't know what the hell that means. Like, trying, trying to take a shot at Jim. Did yes, you know he was trying to. I mean, well, okay. Well, or he was uh, obviously that stuck. There's some some things that rival fans say. Usually, it has some truth to it, and then the fans just like pounce on it all day long. But there there was no doubt that the Ohio State fans took uh, it, it hurt them, and 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 uh, and, and Day has heard it about him. You know, waking up on third base. There's no doubt. Huh. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of guys who, you know, dad's coach, this, that, or whatever. I, you know, Jim, Jim just he was a great player, not because of somebody gave him something. I saw him in practice. He proved it every day, man. Ain't no one giving you ain't listen, playing college football, there's no entitlement. You ain't entitled to nothing. You earn everything every day. You know, he took a crummy job. He he tried to get a job at a lot of places. He couldn't get a job. He took this crummy job at San Diego. You know, he built it. He proved himself. You know, so it, it's it, you got to prove yourself, man. Take take a crummy job and prove yourself. I don't know what what his parents had to do with that, or his dad. You know, you build you build San Diego into a his old man wasn't coaching San Diego. He was. That you know, then it then it got him up and running. Now Sandy you know, Stanford says, "Let me take this guy." So, I just thought that was you know, I don't know what the hell that had to do with him building San Diego into a winner. Yeah, that's uh, him feeling the heat a little bit, and you know, saying something when somebody's out the door, which doesn't have uh, as much effect. I like look, the, Jay Harbaugh had worked his way. Some people would take, well, Jay Harbaugh, you know, it's pretty easy. You know, if you're Jay Harbaugh being Jim Harbaugh's son, being able to get into coaching, but it, it, it did help that he was Jim's son because he was able to get in with John with the Ravens and learn the ropes. And, and then, you know, that, that did help him, you know, get in the door, but you know, he's had to work since then. And if he wasn't able to do the job, he would be. Hey, I've had 30 jobs in my life. I'm here sitting with you because I, we both have a mutual friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, what did he do? He say, hey, talk to Scar. So, I mean, th- that's how it works out here in this world sometimes. You know, we all network. That's right. And, and you know, then Mike McDonald, who did he know? You know, who did these guys know? Everybody knows people that, that helps them get their foot in the door. That that, that goes on in every profession. And, um, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to slap a guy down because he, you know, he's affiliated somehow long as he works his way up and proves it. And I think I've always said, I thought, I thought we had the best special team coach in the big 10 with Jay Harbaugh. I'm I'm just, I totally believe it. We didn't make many mistakes there. We covered kicks. We covered punts. We blocked punts. We hardly ever had punt blocks, uh, punts blocked. So I thought he did a hell of a job and this guy, they got stepping up. He's got some big shoes to fill there. JB, whatever his name is. Yeah, that's his name, J.B. Brown. Hey, you, you know, the part about it is Michigan, it's it's great that they won the national championship. Almost all the coaches are gone. Almost all, you know, these great players are gone. These guys are coming in. Almost everybody's got big shoes to fill, you know. And uh, we will talk about those shoes that will be filled and what you're going to look for for the spring game next Wednesday, Scar, because then we'll only be days away from them actually being out there on the field on Saturday. How about that? Yeah, I'm fired up. We're, we're closing in, and uh, we'll get the film on here. And Jerry and I'll I'll start breaking. Woo! Some- oh yeah, that's gonna be great. And uh, we'll you know we'll get some good answers, and uh, hopefully some great competition, and 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 uh, just guys that look good, man.
But we're all good here, Denny. Things are good in Ann Arbor. I like to hear that, and it just reminded me. I like the post games and during the season, but if I had to look back and, and somebody said, hey, when it came to the film, when when uh, do you like Scar going over the film? I said, yeah, you know, I learned some different things. I'd never done it before. I really liked last year after spring. There were so many different things that, you know, you came up with, uh, you know, for, I don't know, maybe a month or two even with different cut-ups and things. I really enjoyed that. So I'm looking forward to after the spring games, kind of like uh, after the party, there's the after party. This is after the spring game. There's the film breakdown with you, Scar. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we'll get into it. Jerry will look, you know, at the offense primarily. I'll look at the defense and figure out where we're at, man. Sounds great, Scar. Have a great week. All right, Danny, go blue. There he is, Jim Scarcelli. Smash.